afternoon, everyone. We're going to be talking today about the evolution of Carolyn Jane and Gothic scripts. In doing so, two names that must be known are that of Charlemagne and Alcuin. Charlemagne is where the word Carolingian comes from. And as we see from the map, Charlemagne spread his empire far and wide. Through the course of that, he learned that in order to get people to do what he wanted them to, they actually had to comprehend. And that lack of any formalized script led to a great deal of misunderstanding. The people that lived in this region perhaps did not speak the same dialect, nor write the same characters as this region over here. Our second person enters at this point, Alcuin. He was a monk from York that Charlemagne brought to court to formalize a type of script that could be read and understood by many. Now, he was not to create a new one, but literally just tidy it up. This became known as Carolingian Minuscule, or CM. By about 798, all administrative and educational documents were required to be done in CM. Two of the ways that he did this were to actually create space between the letters, as well as the words. At the same time, there are stylistic markers that allow scholars to mark a manuscript period. Roman square capitals began to be used for the initial paragraphs, with Roman rustic for such things as chapter headings, the table of contents, and new paragraphs. The minuscule was used for all other areas. In this, letters become more compact, sharp, and jagged. However, they are still cursive, and a sharp movement of the pen upwards merges to the next letter. G and A took on similar appearances, and T had a flip on the downward crossing. Versal, meaning capitals, and conjoining, meaning just that, letters that are joined, are terms that arise from this area. Versals refer to the capital letters, which are now rounding out, and serifs enclose them. There's not a lot of CT or E. And conjoining mean that letters with bold were put close together, such as OO, PO, BO, BE, etc. One of the important points in this period is that letters were individual collections that made up words, and some of the letters had become standard in the alphabet, and this would set a point for years to come. The Carolingian period gave way to the Gothic period. This was a rather generational change rather than identifiable point. So, for example, one cannot say that in exactly 829, the Carolingian period ended and the Gothic period began. The transitional style tells the story here. Gothic manuscripts were tighter, smaller, and more compact because there was a higher demand, especially for textbooks, and scribes simply needed to work faster. Also, they were not being created for the glory of the Almighty, so there was less concern for appearances. They shortened the height of the letters and forced more letters into smaller spaces. top half the word becomes the focus. In fact, there are many texts that one simply could cover the bottom half and still be able to read it. Letters remained as high, but narrowed in the width. The half R came into use with other letters besides O, and the until B appeared again. Ligatures S T remained, but CT and ET did not. I-L was written as I-J, and G becomes even more close to an 8. Other upward flips of the pen below the minimum show that it is not being lifted to begin the next letter. The English scribes had a unique and identifiable pen. They would let vertical strokes down the minimum baseline, but then would pull the pen straight down for a flat sharif that touched the edge of the left stroke and extended beyond the right. The X, in opposition to the Carolingian script, is actually tucked back. The script name here generally referred to as textura, and in textura, spacing is everything. Scripts come with a bowl, and vertical both touched and overlapped. The bowls were made of straight lines rather than curved, so there was a vertical stroke between them. Now, there was no single textura. It was an evolving art. And some of the development points are that the G came closed, the long S stayed in the beginning of a sentence, but began to look more like an H. For end letters. X, W, Z, and Y were added permanently. T became more pointed, and the half R became used rather than the whole R after vowels. U's and V's had a bit of an identity crisis and had to use another one. There too. 
Really, it's important to note that these are different scripts with different characteristics that set them apart, both in art form and intention. Carolingian scripts were designed to communicate and share information, but to do it beautifully. Gothic scripts were a little bit less concerned with beauty, even down to the name, as it was the Italian Renaissance that coined the term Gothic in relation to barbar barbarians. It was smaller, more crowded, and faster to produce, which was exactly its intention and purpose. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it.